Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing how you can query if an opportunity has contact roles and to be able to create those as a child object called project contact roles under the parent called project. So this relationship diagram gives you, gives you an example of how it's going to flow. So we have a project object, I can go to that right here. It looks up to opportunities. And with that, um, out of the box, opportunities have contact roles. And so using flows, we're actually able to query this and then to be able to create additional custom records under this project object called, called project roles. And I'll just scroll down. Here is the related list right there. And this is all possible without knowing any Apex code whatsoever. Okay, to get started, I'm going to show what's on the, the project role custom object. I'm going to go to the object manager in Lightning, project contact role. And it's only got a couple of fields. And all that really is is there's there's a master detail of contact and then the master detail of project. So it's a junction object and then there is the role field itself. So simple enough, it's almost just like normal opportunity contact roles except this time as a custom object. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the flow itself and how exactly to query for this. So I'm going to go to flows. And I'm going to launch it. Okay, so here's the flow. So the first element, actually I'm going to talk about the, the variables first. The first variable you'll need represents the opportunity ID. So you can create that, call it opportunity ID, the data type is text, input output type is both, and the default value is a global constant empty string. The second one represents the project itself, and essentially that's the same thing. Call it project ID, text, input and output, global constant empty string. A couple more variables we need to create. So there's an S object variable, and this, this represents the opportunity contact role that we're querying. So I called it op contact role s object variable, and again input output. And you have to choose the object. And so we're choosing the standard opportunity contact role. And then you do the same thing with an s object collection variable. So I just lengthened. I just lengthened the variable name to distinguish it from the other one. And again, I selected the object type as opportunity contact role. So the first element you're gonna be using is a fast lookup. And what that will do is query the opportunity for contact roles. So I called it lookup op contact roles. When you choose the object, choose that. So the field you want to choose is the standard opportunity ID and you want it to equal the variable you created called opportunity ID and we're going to pass that variable from process builder. And so when you scroll down and it wants you to assign variables, we're going to choose the, the S object collection. And then I did three fields, including the ID, the role, and the contact ID, because those are three things we're going to need in order to create my custom project contact role object. So with that all set, now we're going to utilize a loop. So whereas you would need a, an Apex class or an Apex trigger to store a list of, of um, records, Instead of with flows, you can utilize a loop so it, it runs through as many records as there are. 
So in this loop, all I called it was loop. It's looping through, you have to choose both the S object variable and the S object collection. Essentially choose those as needed. The first field is for the collection and the second one's for the variable. There's nothing really complicated about that. But essentially the next step is to simply create the record. So with that, I called it create project contact role. I chose my custom object. And then the three fields that have to be populated, which are the contact and project master details, I simply chose where they came into play. So the contact comes from the S object variable. And then there's contact ID. So when it does the lookup, the loop adds it to the collection and then I reference that ID when I create the record. Then the project simply comes from the project ID which is passed from the process builder. And then the role, it's the same case as the contact, it comes from the S object variable. So that comes from the loop and the, the record lookups. So those get passed from that. And that's really all there is to it. This assignment was not needed for this. But one thing to make sure that's important you do is drag, you have to drag two arrows from this point. So not only do you drag a loop to the record create, so it'll ask for each value in the collection or when there are no more to process. So I'll keep it as for each value in the collection, but then you have to make sure you drag the arrow back so that it goes back and forth. If you only drag that arrow once, then the loop will stop after one record. But if you drag it both ways, it will continue for however many records are in the collection. That's the loop. Make sure you save it, close it, and also make sure you activate your latest version or else the process builder cannot reference it. So in the process builder, I have my project process builder. And so it starts in the project object and my criteria is that the source opportunity lookup field, which is just the lookup to opportunity, is not null. And then the following action is to launch a flow. So when you launch a flow, type in the name of it. It will come up as long as it's activated. And then the two variables that we have to pass are the project ID and the opportunity ID, both of which can be referenced from the project object. All you have to do from that point is, is save and activate it, and it should be good to go. So let me create a new opportunity or new project. So I'm going to create new. I'll simply call this test as I'm going to delete it after. And now I'm going to populate the opportunity with one that I know has a couple of contact roles on it. We have Sue, super investor. We see that her role is business user. And we have Michael Jacobs. We see that his role is evaluator. So let me simply give this a save. The only criteria was to have this filled out upon creation. And when we go to related, we see that we have two project contact roles. At the moment, the related list doesn't have all the fields added. Sorry about that. But when we go to these records, we see that not only did it, it grab the project, it grabbed the contact, and it grabbed the role for both of which, which means that the flow worked successfully and that a trigger or an Apex class wasn't actually necessary to complete this flows come in handy far more often than you think. So thank you for watching. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.